in the business, uh, I'd developed a hardware store. And it was doing quite well. And a firm came along by the name of Tent and Torpolin Hire, and they wanted some special bolts to fit to the stanchions that hold the tent up and some pulleys, and we supplied them. And they probably owed us about 50 rand for the whole deal. And they'd been owing it for, say, three or four months and hadn't paid. And I was going into town this particular day for some, some meeting, and my secretary said to me, uh, Mr. Trench, you're going to be right opposite the tent to Poland Hire, and they've owed us this 50 or 60 rand for a number of months. It's such a small amount. We can't take them to court. We don't want to write a whole lot of letters. Just go and collect the money. So after I'd finished my business meeting, I was walking back to my car when I remembered this tent to Poland Hire. They had a place in Ellerville Street. So I walked across to Ellerville Street and I went into this place and there's a little Jew boy there and a Jewish chap and I said to him, uh, I'm from Trench Hardware and I've come to collect our 50 rand and I'll never forget, he goes, what can I do? What can I do? I've got no money. I said, well, you shouldn't have bought that. If you had no money, you shouldn't have bought in the first place. We just want our 50 rand and we want it now. And he said, let me show you something. And he takes me into the back to their workshop. He says, you see that beautiful tent? Some Canadian evangelist came and ordered it. He says, it seats 500 people. And uh, he hasn't come back and he hasn't paid me and I've made it. If only I could sell the tent, then I'll pay you. I said, well, when do you think you'll sell the tent? And he says, well, if I could put it up somewhere. Then I could, the people would see how well it's made, and we went on and on about that. And if you can imagine a Jew boy and a Scotsman, uh, it wasn't all that pleasant, and it was I got a bit heated, and he got a bit heated, and any. But to cut a long story short, I left him and went home. And on a Wednesday night, we always had a half a dozen businessmen gathered, and we'd have tea on. The, we were living near the university at the time. We'd look over the harbour and we'd chat and joke and talk about the Lord. And, and there was a lull in the conversation that night. And just to keep things going, I said, who'd like a 500-seater tent? And there was Don Northrop who was there. He was running uh, Dentcliffe Gate and Fence Company. He'd come out here as a missionary. He wasn't any good as a missionary, but so we got him into business and then he ministered much better. I don't know how that worked out, but that's how it worked out. He then said, oh, he'd like the tent. So I said, well, I can get you a 500-seater tent. You can have it tomorrow. Well, he said, that'd be great. He said, um, just get it delivered to me. I said, well, where do you want it? He said, I know of a good circle, Punjab Circle. And... Punjab Circle is just a motor, uh, there's a big circle in the road. You come off the glideway near the airport and you drive down and then you go around this huge big circle. So I figured, well, he owes me 50 rand. It's going to cost me 50 rand to transport the thing and give it to him. But I kind of felt I'd made a commitment and I offered him the tent. So I found a Jewish guy and I said, I'll come and collect the tent and we're going to put it up. So that was okay. I'd got my big truck, because uh, it's heavy, a tent's heavy, let me tell you. We took it to Punjab Circle. Oh, about an hour later, I get a phone call from Don. He said, look, how am I supposed to put this tent up by myself? I said, well, you asked for the tent, you got the tent. He said, well, I'll tell you what I've done, Bob. I've hired a, a band, uh, a dance band, and they're going to put it up for 25 rand. And he says, I've hired them for the night just to play because we've got no musicians. I said, well, you can do what you like. The tent's yours. Not, this has got nothing to do with me. Oh, no, he says, your big idea. I said, don't be silly. I asked who wants a tent. You said you want it. You got it. Well, he said, I don't want a tent I can't put up. He said, you've got to put it up. So I don't know, rather than fall out with a friend, I said, hi, the guys. So now I've got 50 rand to deliver the blooming tent. 
Now I got 25 rand to pay the guys to wreck the tent. I got to pay them 25 rand for the night to play some music. The tent's up. About 12 o'clock, my Nduna from the hardware shop comes to see me. He says, hey, boss, you must come out. There's your friend here is taking all our electric cable. I said, what do you mean he's taking all our electric cable? And there I walked in the hardware store and there's old Don pulling yard after yard after yard of big, thick, black, three cord electric tubing. I said, hey, what's that for? Lights. You've got to have lights in a tent, you know. And I realized this is costing me a fortune here. Anyway, he cut it. I mean, he had a, a whole stack of this stuff. Off he goes. So I thought, oh, well, I'll go and see what they're doing tonight. Okay. And there was Rex Hempson, a quandary surveyor, Methodist, who I didn't even think was a Christian at the time. Now, if you go to Punjab Circle, you drive down the road. When I get, get there, there's this tent, forlorn-looking. Don got one globe. And I noticed as I went around the, the, the road, I drove over the flex. He'd gone to a house, put in a three-pin plug, and put it across this road onto the island so that there'd be a light for the tent. That's the only light we had. I thought, oh, where am I going to park? So I go round and round, and it's busy. There's a lot of traffic. That's why the circle's there. Well, and I put my hazard lights on, and I, I found a... Um, fairly low area to mount and I mounted and put it up on the, the island. I got my car on the island and I walked in. Oh, I must tell you, I had to buy 500 chairs. I had to hire from McLeod's chairs. I mean, this thing is now financially, I'm getting a bit angry, really. So I walk into the tent. Uh, I can see me now. There's my two friends standing in the front. There's 499 chairs because there's one woman sitting there, one Hindu lady. I thought, oh, brother, now what am I going to do? What am I going to do with this bunch? So I said to them, what, and now what? They said, are we praying? I was, uh, I was so mad, I turned around, walked out, got in my car. I was about to start the car when this thought flashed my mind. Command the people to come. You know, Punjab Circle is in a low part and the road runs up there, uh, you can, so you can see. There were not that many street lights. Well, I, I didn't know what to do, but I'd heard this. I thought, who's going to know? I'm sitting in the car by myself. Nobody will never know. So I just sat there and I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command people to come to the meeting. That was it. And with that, I put the ignition on. I, I put the ignition on, and with the ignition going on, uh, I suddenly saw lights, doors opening, and people walking out. And I thought, gee, that's amazing, you know? That uh, here I am, I've got the tent. Uh, I got two guys in there. I got one lady. I've now commanded the people to come, and suddenly doors are opening. I can see people walking with flashlights, torches, and what have you. But they can't be coming to the traffic island. That's how I'm thinking. There must be something on in the village there or something. Because how are they going to get to the island? There's all this traffic. They're going to get killed on the way. But guess what? They kept coming and coming. And suddenly the tent is full, and you, you, you have like an apron around the tent. I don't know what you call it, but now you've got people standing outside because they can't get in. So we had to get them. We didn't do it. They did it. They picked the aprons up so they could look in. Now I go back to them, and I'll never forget. <laughs> Don says to me, well, how should we run this meeting? Because he's trained as a minister, so he's got some you know, sing some songs and what have you. So they, he asked the band to, to play. Well, they play Indian-type music, you know, strange music to Western ears. Well, that's not going to work, so I said, you know, that don't work. Let's put the Methodists up, because whatever he says, 
is bound to be wrong. We can correct it as we go along. So Rex gets up, shares a little bit. Uh, Don got up and he shared a little bit. And I thought, well, I'm going to give a gospel appeal. What's left for me to do? So I asked all those who were prepared to renounce all other gods and just receive Jesus Christ as the only begotten Son of God and have their sins forgiven. I could. What happened? Half the tent or more stood up to come forward and I thought I made a mess. Yeah. So I said to them, sit down, sit down, sit down. I got them all seated again and I went over the same story. You've got to renounce all other gods. But remember, I don't know and never felt any presence of the Lord. That's the thing you have to understand. And when I gave the next appeal, I just gave up. They all just came forward again. We were there till about 11 o'clock praying for people. When we left, in the tent were walking sticks, crutches, once again, healings. Don is beside himself. He'd never seen anything like it. And I'm a bit confused because I didn't feel any anointing. I didn't sense anything. And yet it all happened. So by the time I get home from Punjab Circle, it's midnight. I go to bed. I've got to get up early, 6 o'clock in the morning, to be at the office at 7.30. As I walk into the office, the secretary says to me, what did you do last night? I said, nothing why. She said, you're in trouble. Yeah, chief of police is here. I said, what for? She said, he's demanding to see you and he's furious. Now, uh, Bob, his name was Bob somewhere, I forgot. But he used to play bowls with me. So I wasn't too worried about that. So when I get in my office, there he is. He said, look here. He said, you've got to take a tent away. You can't do that. He said, it's nothing but a traffic hazard. And you got all these people walking across the street. Are you crazy, Trench? I said, well, no. I don't really, the tent's not mine. It's Northrop. He wanted to put it there, you know. Well, while I'm still talking to the policeman, trying to calm down this chief of police, there's a health department. The chief health department didn't phone me. He's in the office. He said, you had 500 people or more on that island and you haven't provided toilet facilities and you haven't done this and that. And then the, the chief of the electricity department's on the phone. You've got an illegal cable running across the road. It's dangerous. And he carried on. The Department of Community Development said to me, you didn't get permission to hold a meeting. Oh. And I'm, when I tell you, there's fines attached to all this. And it all started with me trying to collect 50 rand debt. But fortunately, there was an election on. And you remember that in the early days uh, when the opposition was rising up, anything to do with racial tensions was very uh, dangerous for a politician. And I thought, yeah, it's my, my only way out is here. So I said to Bob, the police guy, I said, look here, Bob, unless you have some traffic people there to control the traffic and allow the, passenger, the, the pedestrians to walk across. I am going to call a newspaper meeting and I'll tell the reporters that you are racial because you don't want these people to come to the meeting. You are, if it was a white area, you'd let it happen. And he said, I never really said, you're a hound dog. I said, boy, right now, that's what I'm going to do. Get that in your head. I said the same to the electrician, I said it all to the others. And to cut a long story short, that night, there's traffic policemen. They put poles up on the island and they were busy still putting lights up for me, free. They, the health department supplied free latrines and what have you. We were there for, I think, three months before the municipality found a suitable place for us to go. The Hindu Cultural Association of South Africa acknowledged that over 20,000 of their members had changed to Christianity from Punjab circle alone.